is a new report from the inspector general. It's a scathing report. It's got Chicago police in hot water in the aftermath of this summer's uh, rioting and protests. We're speaking with an expert about that in just a moment. A new scathing report says Chicago police showed confusion and a lack of coordination in their response to last summer's protests sparked by the death of George Floyd. Yeah, that re report was released Thursday by the inspector general for the city of Chicago. And it goes on to say that officers oftentimes just didn't understand who was in charge or how to handle some of these situations that were very violent at times with the demonstrators. So we want to bring in right now Antonio Romanucci. He is the founding partner at Romanucci and Blandin and the co-counsel as well for George Floyd's family. We want to thank you very much for coming on to give us your perspective on this entire ordeal, or at least this report. Um, the Inspector General report found that some of the officers failed to report the uses of force, that they weren't wearing their body cameras. Some even covered up their badge numbers and their nameplate responding to the report. Superintendent Brown, critical of the agency for scrutinizing the response of his department rather than the response of all city agencies. What do, what do you think about this report? What's your reaction? Well, this report is not a surprise. I mean, what you've seen right now with this report yesterday is the systemic and pervasiveness of Chicago Police Department's outdated policies. This is not a surprise. And, and the reason it's not a surprise is because the police were not trained and they haven't been trained for years appropriately because of these outdated policies. Their response to not knowing what to do was to use excessive force. And the fact that they were not trying to be transparent, that they didn't want accountability by either, you know, hiding their, their, their name or their badge, that's something that's been going on for years and years. They've been trying to cover up their problems for so long that we saw this culminate and, and really funnel into a disaster after George Floyd was killed. You know, so th this is not anything that's surprising. Yeah, I, I just want to uh, make it clear. I think the report is long. It's more than 100 pages. And I don't think you need to read it word for word to understand that a lot of the blame is not being pointed necessarily at rank and file cops. To be down there, to be on the ground and have bottles hurled at you and other objects, uh, who only, you know, police can imagine what that's like. The blame really seems to lie at the feet of the leadership, uh, in particular being caught flat-footed, not knowing what to expect, raising the bridges. How much do you think we should be looking at the new superintendent at that time, uh, Superintendent Brown? Well, there, there are a number of things going on there. There's no question that it has to start at leadership. The rank and file were told what to do and where to go and they went there unprepared without any guidance at all. We've seen this problem, this systemic problem of leadership for years and years. We haven't been able to keep a police chief on this job for very long because of problems that they encounter. Now, when you look at what happened in June of this year, David Brown had been on the job for, for mere months. Lori Lightfoot on the job for a year. They, they, they saw, they came into this situation unprepared because there was no plan. And that lies at the feet of the culture of the Chicago Police Department for not changing its policies, for not understanding and reconciling that there have been problems for years and years. So it starts at the top, and, and, I, and I believe now, with this report and with what the statements that I'm hearing, is that there is a reconciliation. They will acknowledge the problem because we cannot, as a city, have this happen again. Well, there are aldermen now calling for uh, Superintendent Brown to resign, to leave his post in light of this. Uh, do you think it should be that severe for Superintendent Brown, who, as you just mentioned, was new to the job? And um, sources are telling me that, you know, the mayor was making a lot of the decisions uh, because Superintendent Brown was fairly new to the city of Chicago. Well, whether David Brown should, should resign or not, I don't think that's up to me to decide. But what David Brown needs to do is acknowledge. If, 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 if you acknowledge your mistakes, that's how you build community trust. You don't tell people that everything you did was right. Come forward, be honest, be accountable, tell the truth, say that you made a mistake, and then you can build community trust, and then people will want you to stay on the job. But if you deny, if you stay in denial, then maybe it is time to leave. 
All right, uh, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, Tony, it's always a pleasure to have you uh, and your uh, expertise. You. Join us in the morning, uh, Antonio Romanucci. Appreciate your time, sir. Good day, everyone. Thank you.